Okay, this is one of the cameras you can rent out from the cage currently. So this is the Canon XC10, and this is a nice little portable video camera here. And I'm just gonna, in this tutorial, give you a, a brief overview and some of the things you might find that you need just to kind of get it up and running here. So looking at this camera right here, it is a small video camera that kind of looks like a DSLR a little bit, but it's built for video here. The lens is attached onto it, so you can't take this lens off. And let's just look at some of the things you need to kind of get this started here. So the lens is a zoom lens right here. So if you set it right here at 24, that's a wide angle shot. 35 and 50, it starts to get a little narrow and then you can zoom all the way into 240, which is basically like a telephoto where you can see like a bird from up close from really far away, right? So if you're shooting in a small room, you want it there. Shooting something small from a long distance right there. So additionally, so we have that. Then there's this focus ring right here. So if you need to focus on your object to get it so that it's not blurry, you use that ring right there. Additionally, if we pull this over to the side right here, we have these two buttons right here, which I believe are customizable. Usually when you see on a camera like one, two, three, that means that in the settings you can customize these buttons to mean certain things. So um, I could look up what those buttons are customized to be right now, but it could change by the time that you get your hands on this camera, right? Because someone might have customized it here. So I'm gonna move past these buttons and ignore them for now. But this button right here, focus, uh, M and then A. M stands for manual, meaning that if when you're focusing, you'll need to manually focus it like that using that small ring. And then A, if you set it to A, is automatic, which generally means that if you hold your record button right here, which we'll cover later, kind of halfway down, it'll find focus right there typically. So looking at this lens, this camera a little bit more, it'll come with a lens cap like this. To put the lens cap on, you just take these two buttons and then you squish them down like that. You should hear a click. And to take them off, you just push the buttons in, take it off right there. Be sure to keep track of the lens cap. Um, additionally, right here, we have some, some outputs hidden back there, which um, might be useful. We have HDMI and then a USB here, um, but and then a power supply. But you should be okay without without using those. And I didn't see this before. We also have a mic input here. So the micro this does have a microphone built into it, which I believe is what this is. But the microphone that are built into cameras like this are complete garbage. So they're useful for syncing your audio because it will have an audio signal, so you'll be able to time up the audio, but the audio coming into this camera through this microphone is gonna stink. So um, if you want to have good audio coming into this mic, you might need to plug it in here. Or what a lot of people do, um, which is a, maybe a little bit more of a common practice, is you might have um, a, a clap at the beginning of your video and then sync the audio that comes in here with the video that you might have with a um, zoom recorder or something like that. So continue to go through this. Looking at the bottom, we have the SD card access. So if you just do this latch to, latch to the left and then this should open, you can see we have two memory cards in here that you record onto. So we have a CFast card, which is this big one right here. And then you can just take it out by pressing that button like that. And then it'll come out here. You'll try to record onto this. This is a better memory card. Or you can record onto an SD card. So you have two options. And I would view the SD card as a backup on this. And then you just pop it in by just, you should hear a click right there. Um, continue to look at this. We have, we can mount it to a tripod with this right here. Then we have access to the battery right here. So if you just latch it that way, pull it out. Then we have the battery right here. To unlatch the battery, there's this white little handle. And then if you just push it like that, the battery pops out. Oops. The battery looks like this. It's a proprietary Canon battery that's rechargeable. You just push it in until it clicks. Push it in until it clicks. 
Um, continuing to look at the outside areas of this camera, we have this wheel right here, which can be um, helpful, I believe, on this camera. You can set the aperture automatically with that. Powering it on. Um, if you want to play back what you just recorded, you have to hold this down, and then you can review the footage that you just you've just taken. Um, this wheel right here sets the different modes. I'll get into that soon. Um, right here, we have two options. You can have it in camera mode right there, or you can set it into video mode right there, and then you record by pressing this in. And additionally, we have the menu button and then the menu wheel. So you can, this clicks in all four directions, and then it also clicks in the middle for like an enter input right there. So that's, um, can go in all four directions, but it can also go in as like an enter input. And then this menu will bring us into like the settings of the camera right here. So um, let's power this thing on. So to do that, I'm just gonna hold down on and off. You can see the power light come on right there. And what we have right here, so you can see the screen comes on, the screen can fold out right here. And then additionally, be very delicate with this though, well, if you are folding out the screen. And additionally, this comes with an attachment because um, sometimes if you think about these screens in daylight, um, it can be a little hard to see what's going on. And so this comes with like a little hood that you can attach on that can be helpful if you're recording out in daylight. So just be really delicate with this here. Just fold it in. And this is a touch screen. So a, a lot of what you can do, you can just do by um, using the touch screen right here. Generally, the way the touch screen works, I found in my limited time with this camera is the areas that have a little box around them. So this thing that says MXF 4K, this little box right here that has the pictures of the, the cameras right there. And then this function button, you can press them and kind of get into these menus but you can't kind of click on everything in terms of getting a menu out of it here. So uh, let's see here. Looking at this, we have a readout. So at the top, it says 54 minutes with a battery. That's the battery time. You can see it says CFAST, meaning that, and it's got 27 minutes. So that means that I can record 27 minutes right now into the CFAST card, which is the good card on this camera. And then it's saying the frame rate right there, which is 29.97. And so that's what those functions are right there. You can see right now it's set in the autofocus auto mode right now. So it says AF. And remember, if I want to set it to manual, I just switch it right there. Now it says MF. So that's where you can see if it's an autofocus or manual focus. Um, so let's go into these these buttons right here. Oh, before I go into that, you can see this is the audio readout right there. So I can tell that it's getting audio from that. But again, it's getting audio from this microphone, which kind of stinks, which is at the top of this thing right there. So um, first, let's talk about what this does. So this is MXF 4K right now, and it might say something else for you when you get the camera. So I'll click on that. And so we have three different recording modes is what this means. So you can record in 4K which is going to be a high resolution. I'm forgetting the exact specs. I think it's 3,800 pixels by 2,160 or something like that. Let's see here. And so that's kind of like a higher resolution render right there. Then we have MXF, which is HD 1920 by 1080. And then we have import MP4 HD, which again is 1920 by 1080. And I believe that's going to be at a different frame rate. So for most of you, it, it kind of depends on your computer, what it can handle, all that stuff. But I would typically recommend the MXF, so this middle option, HD, which I believe will record at um, 23.97 um, frames per second, or going 4K. And remember, 4K is going to just take up a lot more space on your computer and things like that. And so just kind of figure out what works best for you. For this, I'm going to do MXF, HD. Then I can go back to the main menu by pressing this button right here. So now you can see it's on HD. On oh, it's recording. It's going to record onto the SD card right now, but I can record four hours of this rather than twenty-seven minutes because HD takes up a whole lot less space. 
you can see it's at 23.976 or 98 frames per second right there. Um, so that's how you, this is how you set what kind of format it's going to record into. Right here, this is an interesting button. If you click on that, 99% of the time you're just going to want to have this set to off. But what these different modes are is you can record in slow motion or you can record in time lapse using these buttons right here. So if you're interested in recording in slow motion, you can click on this um, one quarter button right here. Um, and then if you want to record in time lapse, you can experiment with, like, for instance, the 120 button right here. So um, if you're familiar with time lapse, right, that's where you shoot just leave your camera on a tripod all day and it'll give you, you know, a minute of footage or something like that. And so right here it's set to if you put your camera on a tripod for two hours and let it roll, then the playback that'll happen in terms of when you open it in Premiere will be one minute right there. If you shoot for 20 hours, you'll get one minute. So that'll be like an extreme time lapse right there. Um, and right here, again, will be slow motion. So typically you'll just want it at regular, which is off. To go back, I'll press the back button. Okay, let's look through this a little bit more. So up here, we have the function button up here, which is going to be an important one, probably the main one that you're going to mess with here. So press function. You can see this is all set to off right now. And the reason for that is it looks like this is set in automatic mode, which I am allergic to. I, I do not like automatic mode on any cameras. I want to be able to set things and have artistic input on what this camera is going to do. So I set it to M, which stands for manual right there. And so manual is hopefully is kind of what you set it to right at the beginning here when you're getting started. So let's kind of look through this. The main areas that concern you, I would say, is over here on the right. And so we have the iris which is the, and you can just change the iris, which is measured in F and then a number, the F stop is the aperture. And if you set it at F3, it's gonna be really bright if you look at the screen. And then if you look, set it to F11, it's gonna be really dark. And if you need a um, refresher on what aperture and F stop is, um, just review the tutorials that I have on that but aperture is one of the main controls that you're gonna to wanna to set. Then we have shutter. This is gonna be shutter speed. You're pretty much always gonna want this to be at 160 right here. Try to, for shutter, just check and see if it's at um, 160 right there. Oops. For ISO, that's like the gain. And so gain is, or ISO is another way to set the brightness. So if the number's low, it'll be dark. It's kind of like the reverse of the f-stop. Then if the number's high, it'll be bright. But be um, with the ISO, if you, can, if you can, try to leave the number as low as possible because the higher the number, the grainier your footage is going to be. It is a way to get things brighter, but it distorts if you bring this number too high. So on this camera, you want to try to leave this number low and then kind of get it bright using the f-stop -st or the aperture right here. Um, but sometimes it's too dark for that to fully work, and that's where the ISO comes in, so you'll just need to brighten that up as needed right there. So here we have the white balance. So right now it's set to auto white balance, which um, for a lot of you might be a helpful place to set it, and that means that the color, you can see I have a white cable right there. The camera's going to automatically try to detect if it what um, is white right there. You can see right now it's set to daylight and my image looks too orange because I'm inside and I'm not in daylight. I'm actually in shade right now, or um, let's see here. You would think shade would be the right one for this, but that looks too orange too. Um, auto white balance actually looks pretty good here. Um, but you can see if you're in daylight, you can set it to there. If you're outside in shade right there, if it's a cloudy day, you can set it there. We have fluorescent light, which is actually, I guess, getting the closest to what I'm in right now. And then we have um, uh, tungsten light over here. And so you can kind of 
on a lot of cameras, you can set this by Kelvin, which is a, a number value. But on this camera, it's kind of giving you the situations that you might have. And it has like settings that you can kind of go for right here. And notice that I'm just doing the, um, my, my finger across this lower ledge to kind of pick the different settings and scroll here. So continuing to move right here, we have um, the mic. Okay, and so right here, um, this is my, the first time I've opened it to this, but I believe that this is set to automatic levels right here, um, which will probably be good, honestly. And then manual, it looks like you can manually set the, the level. So if the mic is coming in too loud or something like that, you can use these arrows to bring it down or bring it up right here. But I think automatic for this camera is probably going to be good. So let's scroll down, see if there are any more things we can do here. So we got Zebra. So Zebra is, um, so those are the main controls. So now we're just kind of, I'm digging a little bit deeper here. So I just, I, I scrolled down, pressing this bottom arrow right there. You might have to swipe like I just did. So Zebra, if you look at the, the cable right there, that's an, it shows you an area that's starting to get a little blown out right there, meaning the whites are too white. So you can see it's 70%. That cable might be just a little too bright right now, which means I might need to take the aperture down a little. Or you can just turn that off. Let's turn on peaking. It's not showing me anything right now for peaking. So we can just typically leave that off. Zebra is a pretty helpful one right there. Um, okay, so sometimes you might want to mess with having that on. Um, additionally, oh, I almost forgot. So let's leave the function area. And now let's go to this menu button with these wheels. This is how you change the settings on the camera. So I'll press menu. And this is just if you want to change settings here. Hopefully you shouldn't have to mess with this too much. But um, looking here, we see an option for flicker reduction. That could possibly help with if you're getting flicker by um, shooting footage of a computer or TV screen. This might be a function that could help with that. Um, face detection and tracking. So that might be helpful for, let's click on this. Um, maintaining focus when you're in autofocus. Maybe it, it could help um, your subject stay in focus if they move around a little bit. Um, again, I'm just kind of trying to walk you through the basics here. So um, you'll have to experiment with that. On screen markers, this can be helpful sometimes. So I went to, I was on page one. You can use either the menu button or you can use your finger to type, tap it right there. So on screen markers, it's set to off. A lot of times I'll turn markers on. So for instance, I'll try grid white and exit the menu. And you can see it added this compositional grid right here. And this can be helpful just um, when composing your shots, um, just, kind of seeing the different quadrants that you can use here. For instance, if you have two characters talking or something, you could have one character and make sure they're kind of in this area right here and then cuts over to the other character and kind of make sure that compositionally it kind of makes sense rather than flying blind compositionally. Um, so you can turn that on and off by going to the camera, on-screen markers, and if there's a grid here and you don't want it, you just set it to off and then get off of it right there. You're not gonna wanna mess with any of this stuff, I don't think. Autofocus speed. Um, so right now the autofocus will work fast. You're probably gonna want that, um, but you can also do normal or slow right there. And that just means that when the autofocus is going, um, how quick is the motor kind of changing focus. Here you can change from ISO to gain. I, I recommend staying in ISO right here and that's all that's there here you can change the different recording modes and this the recording speed right here and remember that's what this button right here does and this button right here does in the main menu right there so that's just a second place to kind of find that stuff um here okay so let me go back to menu i'm in 
this recording mode settings, available space and memory. I'm going to click on that. And here you can just kind of see some of the information on how much space is available on the CFAST card and the SD card. I'm going to click on the CFAST card, exit out. Okay, so that doesn't change where it's recording to, but it does give you some information on what cards are currently available in there. Let's see here. So you're not going to want to mess with any of this stuff. Okay, let's go to the third page. Again, you're definitely not going to want to mess with that. You can change the headphone volume. The headphone is right here. So if you want to have headphones in on your camera, you just plug them in right there. You can set the volume right here if it's too loud or too soft. And if I remember correctly, the rest of these settings start to get to be, you know, LCD brightness, you know, stuff like that. So let's exit out of that. And let's see if there's anything else I'm forgetting on this camera. Um, when you're finding focus right now, this is set to, this three button is set to magnification. So if you look at the screen right now, when I press it, it punches in, it zooms in a little bit on that area. So that can be helpful when you're trying, if you're trying to manually find focus, um, to kind of zoom in and magnify in. And you can use the, it looks like you can use this wheel right here to kind of change the area that's in focus, right? Or it's zooming in on, and you can use the focus wheel to find focus and then press three to zoom back out to your overall composition. So that this can actually be a really helpful tool right here, this three button, if you're using manual focus. Okay, continuing this tutorial here, because there's a couple of things after reviewing it that I nearly forgot. So hopefully this will pick up right where we left off here, is that um, looking at here, right, this USB cable, I haven't verified this, but this could be a good way to get your footage out, is just plug this USB cable into a computer. Um, and let's see here. Turning this thing back on, I didn't show, I, I kind of talked about it a little bit, but I didn't show how to record video, per se. So just make sure when you're ready to record video that you're in the manual mode right here. Um, it's turned on. We're set in video mode rather than camera mode, right? Because that'll just take a still image. We want video. And to record, I'll just shoot this, this dongle right here. Try to set it up so you can see what I'm seeing. So I can zoom in using this ring right here. And then I can manually find focus right there. Or focus I'll do I'll try autofocus let's see how this works so with autofocus you can in a lot of cameras tap the screen let's use the magnification tool and it looks like that worked pretty well um, let me okay sorry I'm just trying this in a different area just to verify what works. Okay, so to autofocus, you can tap on the screen on what you want it to um, focus on. You can see it's tracking that area too a little bit. It's a little clunky. But um, so if you're interviewing a subject or something, you can just tap on their face right there as long as you're in autofocus mode. And you can see this is AF right there. And it'll try its best to follow along on there. You can see the settings up here. So I'm um, in f3.7, which is a relatively open aperture. ISO is at 250, which is good. The shutter speed is at 160, which you're pretty much always going to want. I'm recording any of these three modes is OK, really. So it's just whichever mode you want to use. And when it's time to record, I'll just press the red button that's up here. Um, you can see it right there. So let me refine focus by just tapping on what I want it to focus on and I'll hold record, and I'll just move this around a little bit here just so we can see that this is video. Then when you're done, just press that again, and the red light went away. Notice that when you, I tap record and it's recording, you can see the the time is progressing right there, and then we have the R, or sorry, the, the, the red button right there. Also seems to be flashing down here. I'm turning it off. 
Okay, well that, that record button right there is the main indicator, but you can see also that accessing the card was flashing as well. So to review your footage, you're gonna have to hold this down. So you, you, you can't just press it if I remember correctly. Yeah, you have to hold it down for a sec, the play button, which is where my thumb is. And so to play things back, we got this right here. And it looks like, um, let's look through this a little bit. So we got speaker volume, I've got the back button right there. So I can try, I took two pieces of footage right here. So I can play it back. There we go. I had to press it a few times. And I don't know if you can hear it, but you, you can hear me faintly. Um, uh, th this might be a mic and a speaker up here. And you can hear that I'm speaking in the camera, so the audio came in. And so I clicked, and you can see I took two pieces of footage right there. And if you want to delete a piece of footage, it looks like you can just, oops, I'll stop that. When I press stop, it goes back to this thumbnail view. That one selected as highlighted orange. If I wanted to delete it, which I would recommend just generally not doing unless you know it's not a good take, let's just press trash. And I'll select the clip I want to delete. So let's delete the first one, press OK, delete it. So if you want to delete a clip, you can do that. So now we just have the one clip. And let's see here, oops, I press stop. Okay, so you can get some basic information on a clip just by, um, if you're in this thumbnail view, right here, there's that I button right there. So you just press I, then you select the desired clip, press that right there. And you can see that just some basic information comes up. We can see it's a MXF, which is the HD format, 1920 by 1080. It's recording at 23.98 frames per second, where I believe they're just rounding up from 976. Um, you can see the duration, the date, and the time that um, I recorded the clip right there. And so to get out of this, I believe, let's just try this. If I hold, yeah, if you just hold the play button right there, we're back into video mode, right? And remember that the function button right here is the one that you press if you wanna change the iris, the shutter speed, and all that good stuff, as long as you're in manual mode.